DOS games are absolutely beautiful. Classics like Doom, Wing Commander or Prince of Persia. But some games are difficult to run. For example, here on the screen we have the game Wing Commander and it's complaining about not having enough memory. However, the machine I'm running this game on has 128 megabytes of RAM. Let's give this video a bit of context. We're going back to the year 1988. This is the Computer Shopper magazine. And back in those days, our first family PC was a 286, very similar looking to this one. We had EGA with an EGA monitor, 640 kilobytes of RAM, which is quite important. And of course, a five and a quarter inch floppy drive and the hard drive, I believe was 20 megabytes. And of course, this channel is about games. So let's have a look at some of the games that I remember playing on this machine. This is on the DOS Days website, which is an excellent resource. So some of the games I remember playing, definitely the first King's Quest, and I remember playing F-15 Strike Eagle, as well as King's Quest 2. In 1987, of course, I remember playing the Elite version for the PC, and there are usually more adventure games, which is one of my passions. We had Leisure Suit Larry, Manic Mansion, Police Quest, of course, Space Quest 2, and Test Drive. These are all games I vividly remember. 1989 had heaps of games, but some of them would already push the performance of a 286 and offered VGA graphics, which had more colors than EGA. A10 Tank Killer, Battle Chess, Budokan, We've got heaps of Sierra Adventure games, F-15 Strike Eagle 2, we have Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, Indianapolis 500, I remember playing Prince of Persia of course, um, Space Quest 3, Test Drive 2 and Xenon 2. So back in the 80s, 640 kilobytes of RAM, well that was all you needed. All the games just work, you didn't have to muck around with editing your startup files, MS-DOS, the game, and all the drivers, they fit it into the RAM without any dramas. For this project, I'm afraid I don't have access to a 286. So the next best thing is of course a Super Socket 7 machine that we can slow down with disabling caches and other tricks. So it's running at 233 megahertz and the machine has 128 megabytes of RAM. These are typical startup files for such a machine. There was no optical disk drive, no networking yet, but we did have a mouse, so we're loading the standard Microsoft mouse driver. Let's run the mem command and have a look at how much memory we have available. So we have 545 kilobytes of RAM, and this table here is interesting. We can see a breakdown, including the upper memory. We will come back to that later. So we can see how much MS-DOS, the command and the mouse driver, how many kilobytes it takes up in total. But we have 545 kilobytes of conventional memory available. And that was plenty. All these games I mentioned should work just fine with this amount of memory. So let's have a look at some games from 1990 onwards. And we can see here it mentions already a 386DX with more memory and VGA graphics. So stunts, I remember playing this one. What else have we got here? We have F29 Retaliator. I remember playing this game, King's Quest V, beautiful graphics. Lynx, an interesting golf game, the LHX Attack Chopper. Loom, of course, Midwinter, I remember these games vividly. Red Baron, of course. Monkey Island, Rise of the Dragon, so heaps of games. And of course, Test Drive 3, and here we have Wing Commander. In 1991, the trend continues. Games had more impressive graphics, animations, sound effects with the Sound Blaster. So the games became more complex, more demanding, and of course, the hardware also became more powerful to match those requirements. This is the Vorbis Denk Zettel from 1993 and we can have a look at some of the specifications of typical computers. So we already have here 486 computers and in terms of amount of memory, this one has eight megabytes, this one has four megabytes and 80 
megabyte of hard drive on this one. This one has 210 megabytes. So the memory amount, yeah, increased and also what changed were all the accessories. So let's zoom in a little bit here. We've got things like the CD-ROM drive. You could get a scanner. We've got a streamer, which is a tape backup device. So hardware, yeah, also pushed up the demand for more memory. Now let's try playing a game from 1990, which is Wing Commander. I want you to pay attention to this message here. No expanded memory detected. And then it's also throwing a message that we do not have enough memory to play Wing Commander, despite the fact the machine having 128 megabytes of RAM. So what is going on here? Well, it all has to do with backwards compatibility. So as the PCs improved, we still wanted to be able to run previous software. So when you turn on a DOS PC, it boots up in something called real mode. And it uses a concept of conventional memory, which is only 640 kilobytes based on previous PC architecture in order to be compatible with legacy software. This legacy memory amount of 640 kilobytes, it's called conventional memory. And for some of the more modern games, we need to optimize our memory to have as much conventional RAM available as possible. Let's go back to trying to run Wing Commander because this game really addresses a lot of issues to do with memory. So the first one is we need to have as much conventional memory available. So this is the memory from zero to 640 kilobytes. And the second aspect is we need something called expanded memory. So here again are the startup files. I have included the driver for the CD-ROM drive. So we've got a line here and then we also need a second driver in the autoexec batch file to get the CD-ROM driver working. In terms of memory, it doesn't look too good. We only have available 490 kilobytes. So by the early 1990s, if you still have a machine with just conventional memory configured, yeah, gaming was a real struggle. You simply didn't have enough memory. So there are a lot of things we can do to optimize the amount of conventional memory. The first one is we can replace the standard drivers. So this CD-ROM driver is a standard Oak driver. It uses quite a lot of storage and we can replace that with a better one that has a smaller memory footprint. This driver is well respected by the community. It's compatible with games and doesn't require as much memory. We can do the same thing with the mouse driver. So this is the default Microsoft mouse driver, quite large in terms of how much memory it takes up. We can replace that with the Qt mouse driver, which again has uh, a requirement for much less memory. Let's reboot the machine. We have 490 kilobytes before and now 527 kilobytes. So that's already a nice improvement. Well, that's still not enough conventional memory for many games. So let's have a look at this Wikipedia article. Very interesting. It helps us explain what's going on. There is a interesting part of the memory called high memory area. So we've got the first 640 kilobytes of memory. This is the conventional memory that we want to maximize. And this high memory area, we can use the memory manager to load part of MS-DOS into this area to increase the amount of conventional memory. And to do that, we need to edit our config file. Let's paste this line here, which loads the high mem driver. And then we need a command here, DOS equals high. The high mem memory manager also achieves a second goal. It enables what's called extended memory that some games can take advantage of. And then we will reboot our machine. Here we go. And we can see the following now that MS-DOS, the amount of conventional memory it uses is now reduced only 15 kilobytes. And all in all, we now have 585 kilobytes of conventional memory and more games that were failing before are now working. However, we can increase the amount of conventional memory even further. 
upper memory area is the magic keyword. We can see it here, UMA. It's a special region of the memory from 640 kilobytes to one megabyte. And we can use that to load some of the drivers that are currently sitting in conventional memory. We can load them into the UMA area. And for that, we need the EMM386 memory manager. This will also give us expanded memory. So we need to edit our config file again. Let's paste another line here for the EMM386. And up here, we need to add something, comma, UMB. And there's more to do. For every device driver that we want to load high, we have to use the device high command. We also need to do the same thing in the auto exec file with the LH, which is short for load high command. Let's save the file and reboot the machine. Here we go. Look at that. It's a lot more conventional memory, 617 kilobytes. And we can see in upper memory, we now have the CD driver, the MSC DEX driver is also loaded and the mouse driver. All of these have been successfully loaded into the upper memory area. And we also have expanded memory. So we can try Wing Commander. Here we go. Wing Commander, expanded memory, detected and fully used in the game launches without any issues. Most games, but not all of them, but the vast majority of games will work perfectly fine with this configuration because we have huge amounts of conventional memory as well as expanded memory, which a handful of games take advantage of. Most games, but not all of them. Turrican 2, the PC version is one of these games. We will get a message here and it tells us, remove any memory managers like EMM386, only leave high mem driver alone in your config file. So to summarize what we did, we replaced the drivers with drivers that have a low memory print for the CD-ROM drive as well as for the mouse. Then we used two memory managers. The first one, high mem, which does two things. With the DOS equals high command, it lets us load some of the MS-DOS operating system into an area outside of the conventional memory. It also will enable extended memory. And then we can use the EMM386 memory manager in combination with the comma UMB option to load device drivers into the memory area outside of the conventional memory by using device high or load high. And that will also give us expanded memory, which quite a few games, especially games from Origin, like to use. So you can imagine back in the day, you bought a game, you installed it on your computer and you just couldn't make it to run because of some issues with the memory. And it was a big ask to manually edit your startup files. It was difficult. Maybe you didn't have the patience. So a lot of games actually came with utilities to create a boot disk and you then booted the machine from that floppy boot disk, which had a, yeah, a cut down version of your startup files, reducing the amount of drivers in order for you to play the game. Here we have TIE Fighter and this game has a boot disk command and well, it will actually go through your startup files and then create a blank boot disk with the memory optimized to run this game. So this was one approach to make life easier for gamers that didn't want to spend too much time figuring out how to optimize their memory. And of course we have to mention the MemMaker tool, which can yeah, analyze your startup files and then apply some tweaks automatically. So let's just go through the process and see what happens. So it did a bunch of reboots and it's now asking us if the system is working properly. Well, we're just gonna say, yes, it is. And yeah, before MemMaker, this was the amount of memory and now we have this much, but remember we had EMS deactivated. So let's have a look at the startup files. There you go. So it added the EMM386 line and this is the previous one from myself. Um, for the device high and the load high commands, it seems to have added a parameter here. And let's look at the final result. We have 
617 kilobytes, which is exactly what we had before with my manual method. But I have to admit my system is fairly straightforward. I don't have any SCSI or any other device drivers necessary. And finally, this was also the era of fancy boot menus. And this is my contribution to the retro PC community. Those of you who have been following me for a while, you know this boot menu very well. It's part of the MS-DOS starter pack. You can download it from my website. And yeah, it sets you up with a nice boot menu where you can choose between expanded, extended, and conventional memory. The first three options give you mouse and CD-ROM driver. The next three options remove the optical disk driver. And then finally, without mouse, without optical disk drivers. And the option conventional memory only. Apparently, there are some games out there. If they don't find MS-DOS in the conventional memory, they freak out. They think, oh, this, this is impossible. Where is DOS? And then will not run. I'm not aware of exactly which games fall under that category. If you know, please leave a comment down below. So yeah, this is what I use. So far, every game that I've come across and tested has been working with this boot menu just fine on a range of machines, not just on a Pentium 2, also on a 386, 486, Athlon 64, you name it. And I've been, uh, yeah, I've got good feedback as well. So it sort of has stood the test of time and has been put through its paces by you guys out there. We do have some good news. More modern games like Doom or Descent, they use what's called a 32-bit DOS extender, DOS 4GW. You might have seen it in the splash screen when you load up a game. And that lets the software use the entire amount of RAM on a 386 or higher processor. So guys, to summarize the situation, in the beginning, things just worked. The 640 kilobytes of conventional memory, well, that was all you needed. And also the late era of DOS games, also everything just worked because they used 32-bit DOS extenders. It is this transition period in between where the developers, the software pushed the limits and demanded more and more memory. And yeah, the industry wasn't quite just ready yet. I do hope you found this video interesting and helpful and that terms like conventional memory and expanded, extended memory, as well as loading DOS into the high memory area and loading device drivers into the high memory. I hope it cleared up some of the confusion and do check out my MS-DOS starter pack. I put it together for beginners, but also for people that do know how to edit config files and uh, autoexec batch files, but it's just, yeah, another barrier that stops us from enjoying these classic, fantastic DOS retro games. I do wanna hear from you about your experience with MemMaker. My personal experience was, well, it didn't really do too much. Sometimes you even got a worse outcome. So I always tweaked things manually. And my motto is less is more. So I like a lean system. Also, if you're using Windows 98 and MS-DOS 7.1, the memory requirements are a little bit higher. So MS-DOS 6.22 will have a smaller memory footprint, meaning it will give you more conventional memory without any tweaking. So there you have it. I hope you found the video interesting. Leave your DOS memory stories down below in the comments. I will check your comments Saturday morning with a cup of coffee. And it's something I really look forward to and treasure. And that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.